Hi, my name is Mary Duffy, and I'm a graduate student in clinical psychology at Florida State University. I'm currently in my fourth year and work under the mentorship of Dr. Thomas Joyner in his lab, The Prevention of Suicide and Suicidal Behavior. Well, as you may guess by the name of the lab, my area of research, my area of focus is on the prevention of suicidal behavior, um, specifically looking at individuals with eating disorders. So you may or may not know, eating disorders are incredibly deadly illnesses, and one of the leading causes of death in those with eating disorders is suicide. So this is an extremely important problem, as that lethality is very risky, and we don't know a whole lot about how to treat it effectively, how to determine who is at risk for suicide. And many people have suicidal ideation or want to die and don't go on to do so. Mm -hmm. So I like to look at individuals with eating disorders, suicides, overlap between those. Um, one big factor that connects those is disconnection from the body. So the idea being that if you feel disconnected from your body, it's much easier to harm yourself or to kill yourself because the body is almost like an object. And of course, in those with eating disorders, there's a lot of animosity towards the body, disturbed body image, just dislike for even being in one's body. So that may be one of the reasons why suicide is so accessible for those with eating disorders. So, my current work, my dissertation, is focused on the idea of whether we should be warning those with eating disorders about mortality risk in order to motivate them to move away from their eating disorder. It seems like a great idea on the surface, but research in other areas where a health risk behavior is linked to self-injury or overall dangerousness suggests that if that behavior is linked to someone's self-esteem or their identity, then warning them about risk may actually push them towards their behavior rather than away from it. And that's been shown with things like reckless driving, cigarette use, tanning, a lot of different health risk behaviors. But no one's looked at it with eating disorders. And because the mortality rates there are so very high, we don't want to be doing anything to make them worse. And this is something that rationally, we would think it would help. Um, of course, if someone tells you that something you're doing is dangerous, it would encourage you to stop doing it. But in this case, maybe not. And if not, we don't want to do that, obviously. So that's my research. Um, in terms of my future career, I'd like to move into eating disorder treatment and research, um, potentially in a leadership position somewhere like a treatment center where I would be able to take my experience in research as well as my clinical experience and put them together to improve the treatment and the outcomes for people who seek help. If you are considering graduate school in psychology, I would suggest first looking into the different types of programs and deciding what's the best fit for you, the things you enjoy, and the career you'd like to have. So I took the route of a PhD program. So these tend to be more focused on research. There is obviously some clinical training, some clinical experience, but the end goal is often to be in a research position. If you are more focused on clinical work, something like a PsyD may be a better fit for you or you still get a doctorate and a lot of overlapping experiences, but the focus is much more on the clinical side. There are also options like getting your master's degree in mental health counseling or marriage and family therapy. Um, there are also great routes to practice and those are a little bit faster as well, with my program being five years on campus plus an internship, where a master's program may only be two years, so it's, it's more efficient if you want to go into practice. I also suggest that if you do want to go into a PhD program to get as much research experience as you can before you apply. So that can include things like working in a lab as an undergraduate student, as well as after you graduate, getting a post-baccalaureate research position. So 
a lot of people get those before they join, spend about two years helping out with research projects, coordinating, working with participants, just building up their experience with research to decide, one, that that's what they want to do. And if so, to show that they have experience, they can, they actually are interested. And that can help a lot with getting an interview and getting into a program. I would also suggest that before you get into graduate school, make sure that you know how to find some work-life balance and some self-care. It's good to establish those habits early because trying to start that once you're in school and very busy, have lots of responsibilities, it's extra hard to find the time. And it's so important for your mental health to be able to self-care and disconnect from work and not just work all the time and burn yourself out. So for me, I have cats and really love to hang out with them, to play with them. I'm also a fan of going for walks with my friends or having movie nights, you know, anything to help disconnect from work and connect me to other domains of my life that I enjoy. So that's me, that's what I do, that's the advice that I'd give. And I wish you all the very best in the future.